What an amazing day it is to have to be. Yes, it is. And on amazing things, on amazing days, amazing things happen. Tell the truth. This is a man who I've watched for years now. Me too. <laughs> admire him because in the various roles he's been able to master. Also admire him because of his background. As you guys know, I watch a lot of programming that deals with people who go out in the wilderness and learn how to sustain living off the earth. That was deep. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole. Don't worry, Chris. Chris, Chris, going Chris knows where they were going. Chris was like, Chris is like what, what, what? <laughs> "This man has been in the back, of the outback, you know, and has lived amongst the crocodiles and the armadillos and the marsupials." Okay, Sway. <laughs> it's true. Before, <laughs> before he graced the big screen, and now he's became this, become this worldwide phenomenon, and has done excellent work. I just recently saw his latest film. 12 Strong, which is an incredible film. He's here with us today, ladies and gentlemen, especially ladies. Give it up for the one and only Chris Hemsworth. Thank you. Thank you. Man, it's got a little music for you too, Chris. A little amazing music there. <laughs> Set the mood. Chris, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Good to meet you in person, dude. You too. Thanks for having me. Good man, you're you. not as big in person as I thought he was. Uh, it's all special effects. Smoke some smoke and mirrors, you know. You mean you mean so the, the muscles are photoshopped? Nah, nah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm actually I've uh, I've just lost some weight. I'm Did slimming you? down for something else. For another role. Yeah. Well, can you tell us about that role? It is. Uh, it's the yeah. guy who did, uh, if you ever saw a movie called Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods. Uh, one of my first films. Uh, same director, same writer, uh, and it's a 60s noir thriller. Um, oh. We're going to shoot it in Vancouver. Okay. And, uh, starts in a couple of months. Starts in a so. How much weight do you have to lose, bro? Like, no, I'm sort of down to where, where, where I'm, where I'm going to be. Okay. Yeah, Heather, so. you look disappointed in this. Why you, <laughs> no, I'm, happy, right there. I'm happy, Chris. It <laughs> is It'll so real, too. Yes. <laughs> No, I was like, yeah, mine too. But I wanted to know what was the like, what's the mental um, part that you deal with when you have to lose weight, gain weight? Like, what is that mentally? Um, I look at the, the first time I did it, it was um, you, you're constantly trying to, you know, eat the right amount of calories and you're plenty of time in the gym, and it mm -hmm. becomes an obsession. And then it was all about trying to get to say 220 pounds or whatever I was aiming for, and then. The second, third time, you get a little smarter about it and you realize that actually if I'm, I don't need to be quite that big, just leaner. And then you change oh. your training again and so on. But it, there's a um, huge amount of muscle memory that, you know, that, that, that comes with it. And, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, I mean, God, it's, 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 uh, I, I can't complain about it if, if that's my job. It's, uh, that's a job. <laughs> that's a job. It's a good thing. Rihanna did an interview before that just popped up to my head where she was talking about how she loves seeing her body just fluctuate. She mm -hmm. loves being able to be a thick girl. She loves being able to be slim. What's, like, your personal favorite aesthetic for yourself? Like, this size? or Probably like this size, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I like to be more functional. You know, the, when I play Thor, there's a, you know, I put on a lot of mass and you end up being pretty stiff and, mm. and, and it's, it's, you know, your joints and so on get pretty achy from lifting all that weight. Um, and it, you know, works for the sort of aesthetic on screen, but, um, I gotta say, you know, I surf a lot at home and much prefer the sort of mobility and flexibility of yeah. being a little leaner. Makes sense. Yeah. But it's good to have it, you know, the education and sort of all of it. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. We're all getting in shape with Chris right now, man. That's right. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious because we're staying on this whole weight thing. I, I'm, I'm not trying to sound one way or the other, but you've got Avengers uh, Infinity War coming up. And I just figured that on the set, now that you've got like the Guardians joining in, you've got Dave Batista, you've mm -hmm. got a lot of big dudes that are going to be joining the cast. Yeah. Is there any competition about like who's doing push ups offset or anything <laughs> like that or who's, you know, flexing in the mirror before you shoot? Not with Dave Batista around. <laughs> no, God, he's, he's massive. Um, I mean, we have an on-set gym, which we all sort of, you know, to try and in and out of through the day. But um, at this point, you know, we've done so many of them. It's sort of like, you, there's, yeah, you, there's, you're not too concerned about who's yeah. doing right. what. You can't it's just, a just try to get, get on with it, you know? Right. Yeah. You, you know, we, we have something in common with Chris uh, being a part of the Marvel Universe here, Heather B. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yeah. You, you don't know that? No, no. Oh, okay. Is <laughs> Chris is looking at me like, what is this dude talking about? If there's that many people in the movie, I, I wouldn't no, be surprised. No, 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 no. We, we did Luke Cage, man. Ah! Oh. Oh. Yeah, you didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> you didn't see that? <laughs> no, it was episode 12, first season, oh. like in the, the 20th minute, and, it, and our scene lasted about 
two minutes. You never saw that. I, I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I'm gonna I'm gonna get a hold of it. <laughs> go, talk, go talk to Mr. Marvel or somebody. I will. Yeah, yes. Marvel. Why, is been, why is that I've been put in front of me? <laughs> All right. Um, I got a chance to see the movie Twelve Strong. And uh, I come from a, a family of uh, with a military background. Mm-hmm. And after 9-11, because I've worked with Viacom and MTV for years, we did a, a lot of coverage of uh, people who were going over for tours and, and, and coming back and really being able to uh, sit down and talk with people personally about their experience. Mm-hmm. So I learned a lot of stuff that um, I wouldn't have learned otherwise. And then watching the movie 12 Strong uh, really really put me back in that place, in that state of mind, Mm -hmm. where I know where this country was at that time, uh, trying to figure out what's going on with the Taliban, what's going on with Al-Qaeda. We really didn't even have, you know, proper information about Mm -hmm. it. And then so seeing this movie, I thought it was really well done. And I want to ask you a couple of questions about it. This is a strong movie. I I encourage everybody to see it this Friday. Here's a clip from it right now. We're teaming up with a warlord that we know nothing about. We're not going to be able to tell our enemies from our allies. Every step we take is going to be on a minefield from a hundred different wars. And no one's ever called in a smart bomb airstrike from a B-52. So anyone who tells you they've done this before, has experience in this, is lying, sir. I briefed five potential captains for this mission. About a hundred years of military experience between them. But you're the only one that sees it the way it is. I choose you. You and 11 men. I would be remiss if I did not say to you, even in success, the odds of you coming home. You're 100%, sir, with all due respect. It's a hell of a thing we do, isn't it? How do you love your family and leave them to go to war? Wow, man, that's Chris Hemsworth uh, playing Captain Mitch Nelson in a a movie, 12 Strong. Um, I I was emotional in the movie because Mm -hmm. it it, it took us back to that time. Why was was this a, was it just a role for you or why was it important for you to do this movie? Um, No, absolutely, it was incredibly important. and look, you know, I remember exactly where I was during that, that period mm-hmm. uh, uh, back in high school, even in Australia. Um, you know, the whole world, I think, has the most vivid memories and feelings about that period. Um, what I didn't know and I thought I knew about this, this particular conflict and what happened in Afghanistan, but what I didn't know was this highly classified story that these were the first 12 guys sent over. Yeah. They volunteered for it. It was basically a suicide mission and they all couldn't get there fast enough. And they and they knew they had very little intel about what they were walking into. All they knew was their job was to link up with the local Afghan people who mm-hmm. were also fighting the Taliban, the invading force of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, and to fight alongside them to take back the country. And whoever controlled the country, uh, controlled the city of Mazari Sharif, controlled the country. And um, when they got there, there was $100,000 on each of their heads. They didn't know if they were going to be cashed in, you know, at the, 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 first, the first opportunity. Um, so they adapted, evolved, worked with the people, and then they had to ride horseback into battle. Yeah, yeah. So they had to convert back to World War One tactics and, and horse-mounted cavalry charges in, into battle, which w- every, you know, every time I read the book or read the script, if someone had pitched me this idea as a fictional story, yeah, you, you wouldn't have believed it and would have thought it's it's ridiculous. Uh-huh. And um, so to then hear about this years later, um, knowing the importance of it, um, knowing that you know these guys also came home uh, with no fanfare. It was uh-huh. a classified mission, as I said. No one, no celebration. They went on with their lives, and it's now become declassified. The one um, statue at the World Trade Center is, uh-huh. is is of the a soldier on a horse uh-huh. representing what these guys had done. And so um, I felt a huge sense of honor, you know, uh, uh, being asked to, to play the role and represent these guys, yeah. um, but also the, the pressure and anxiety that comes with getting it right and getting doing it justice. Right. We got a lot of folks who, uh, who are, are, are in the service that tune in to this show, and, mm-hmm. and, that, and that's the thing that fascinated me from my little knowledge that I knew how accurate it yeah. was. First of all, you rode that horse, man, like you a jockey, baby. <laughs> I was proud of you right there, Chris. Thank you. Was that hard? Was that, was that painful, man? You was... It was painful in certain areas. Yeah, was, uh, all the obvious ones, definitely. Yeah. Good yeah. thing you got your kids out the way. That's yeah. okay. That's right. Wow. I, got, I got three. That's plenty. <laughs> okay. Um, it, wait, I'd written a little bit, but, but for movies, and usually one scene in a movie, not for four months. And so mm. this was an intense sort of experience. My guy that I was portraying. Uh, had grown up in ranches and, and mm-hmm. ridden a lot. 
none of the old, other soldiers had. Um, so I definitely had some some work to do. <laughs> well, you know what I was surprised, and let me ask you if it surprised you too, because it was you were teaming up with the Northern Alliance, which mm-hmm. was broken off in like three different militias, right? They didn't even trust each other. It's like being a part of a gang here in the States, and then you yeah. fight within the gang, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which I thought was accurate. Uh, but what surprised me, and were you surprised by how much, uh, how many weapons that the opposition had mm-hmm. that yeah. obviously didn't come from Afghanistan. And, yeah. you know, when you start reading the script and reading these books, did that surprise you, that information? It did, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the, in, in the book as well, there's, um, there was one of, the, one of the, uh, the places they ended up taking over. There was this massive cache of weapons and mm-hmm. dating back right through to, to the, the, the Russian, um, you know, when the, when the Russians were there trying mm-hmm. to take over and that conflict. Um, and I was just talking to Mark Nooch yesterday, um, the, the guy I play, and he said there were guns wrapped in plastic, you know, 20, 30, 40-year-old weapons just sitting in this in this base camp set up. And so there's, um, but yeah, the history of weaponry and so on that I had set up and was, was, was phenomenal, yeah. That's the hustle, Heather. Mm-hmm. The weaponry is, I think, what fuse a lot of the wars. Yeah. I've been behind a lot of these wars. Sure. In my opinion. You don't got to agree, Chris, because, you know, you in public eye. <laughs> 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 Just not, Chris. You know, I think that's just the sale of weapons. That's yeah. at the center of a lot of these wars, in yeah, my of opinion. Course. Yeah, Yeah. Um, great movie. Chris Hemsworth this here. Go ahead, DB. I wanted to ask because I saw the movie also, and Rob Riggle plays a colonel in the movie, and I read mm-hmm. that because a lot of people know him from his comedic roles, but they don't know that he actually served in the military. And I read that he start, uh, he actually served under the person that he's yeah. playing in the movie. So how personal was it for him to be in this movie around you guys who were kind of like thrust into this new scenario? Very personal, yeah. Um, and he was, you know, again, felt very honored and excited to be a part of it. And, and also, you know, he'd sort of retell stories about the actual guy he was playing, the guy above him as well who the other actors were playing and and he became this great resource and wealth of information and knowledge when we'd say was it like this or how did he act or did you know they approach it this way and so that was um you know incredibly fortunate for us but but um watching his experience through it he was sort of i think pretty um it was a pretty sort of monumental special moment too you know Mm -hmm. I like Chris. Chris, for as famous as you are, man, you're probably one of the most down to earth people yeah. I've, I've met in a long time, man. You're, oh, thank you're you. not rattled by it all, huh? <laughs> no, I had, um, I had great parents growing up, and and you know I have a good circle of people around me, and family and kids and so on that that um, helps me keep my feet on the ground. Okay, <laughs> man, Chris Hemsworth, man, we're gonna open up the phone lines eight 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 seven four two three three four five. The new movie is Twelve Strong in theaters this Friday. Our season has returned. Has returned. Sway in the morning. This guy's an actor, family man. He does it all, ladies and gentlemen. He's even a fancy dancer, Heather B. This guy got moves, man. Chris Hemsworth is here. Let's take uh, a We back. now go to Chris Hemsworth. He's up now. He's gone from, like, in the first show, he was last place, and then last week, oh our God, fifth show, he was third place. So he's turned the corner, um, and he's you know suddenly sort of found his feet, which will come in handy for his foxtrot. Wilson, <laughs> seven. Hey, 28. It was great to finish top three and not on the bottom. And what happened to the other Chris? <laughs> so now I'm a little bit worried if the old one comes back. I don't know what's going on with Chris Hemsworth this week, but he's on fire. <laughs> Yeah, Chris Hemsworth, man. That's him doing Dancing with the Stars, man. Uh, wow, the man. The Australian version. The Australian version, man. You was just oh, willing like... to do anything at that time, huh? It's, I was just wanted some money to come over here. <laughs> that was my uh, that was my paycheck to get to get here and, and chase this dream. The, well, you know, that's interesting because people think you just showed up on the screen and you were four. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it took a, <laughs> took you, a while, it yeah. It took a while, right? Yeah, and I did that show and I sort of forgot that the internet existed. And, and when I did it, I thought, oh, no one will ever see this, you know. <laughs> the internet doesn't reach from Australia to America. They'll never know. Yeah. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> that was way in the morning, Rewatching man. it, reliving it. Yeah. What, somewhat what, traumatic. What would you say was, did you ever have a hard point in the game? Um, yeah, yeah. I had um, I, my, my first, I got a couple of films at the beginning when I got here and then I did Star Trek, and I thought, great, this is it, I'm off. Yeah. And then had nothing for like a year or, or longer, and um, it was, you know, hundreds of auditions, and no, 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 no. 
and started thinking, oh, this, what am I doing? I'm going to go back home. And, and right before Christmas, at the end of that sort of, you know, that, that year, I sort of thought, okay, one more shot, one more shot. And mm-hmm. if it doesn't work, I'm not coming back. <laughs> and they got a, uh, the Cabin in the Woods was the audition and then uh-huh. Thor was next and it just sort of rolled from there. But I've got to say that year was pretty testing, you know. It's, um, you know, the definition of insanity is to try the same thing over and over and expect a different result. Yeah. And there you are being told no, 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 no and somehow having to think, mm, maybe they're wrong, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you have to believe in yourself then. Yeah. And here you are on Sway in the Morning. It's downhill from here, Chris. <laughs> yeah. well, well, speaking, of, speaking of auditions, we had Tom Holland here when he was promoting In the Heart of the Sea. Yeah. And, we, and I asked him because you were starring in the movie as well if you gave him some good advice and this is what he had to say about you. I mean, he's been great, man, especially over the last few weeks because... A lot is changing and it's nice to be able to like ask him questions about what I need to do and what I need to prepare for. But when I was auditioning for Spider-Man, I kind of, I rang him up and I was like, hey, Chris, can you kind of get me a job and try and help me out? <laughs> and he was awesome. I mean, he spoke to all the guys at Marvel and was like, yeah, he's not that bad. I mean, maybe <laughs> give him a chance. Yeah. But no, he's great. He's he's a really cool dude. Yeah. Spider-Man said that about you, bro. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, but did y'all hear what he said? And Heather, we got to pay attention. He said he called the people at Marvel. Mm-hmm. I you, did, yeah. You did? I did, yeah. Um, I called him up and I, cause I just shot Heart of the Sea with him and said, this kid's pretty special. He's got something. And uh, But the biggest thing I was saying to him was, he's, look, he's got all the talent he's going to need, but he, the humility in that kid is, is I think, is what you guys are going to enjoy. You know, his work ethic was incredible. And, uh, and I think to this day they're, you know, definitely happy, you know, because I tell you, making those films, they're long and they're exhausting. And if, mm-hmm. if there's a lot of ego flying around, it's, it's, it can be a, even trickier to navigate. And uh, he's a good kid. Yeah, we, we saw that with uh, um, mm-hmm. The Rock and, and, and Tyrese and Vin Diesel. We saw how. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how was that one? <laughs> you don't have those kind of problems on your set, huh? We're lucky. No. Yeah, no, no, you're lucky. All right. Chris, being that you're a family yeah. man, I got to know. I think Miley is probably a member of the household now. I don't know if she's officially <laughs> married to Liam yet or not, but no. when you have another, okay, got that. They're not officially not. I'm just <laughs> got that out there. But when you have another like famous person that's in your circle like that, does Miley come through with some really good gifts during the holidays? Does she have food that she brings over? Like, what does she like? Um, I always just expect her to, you know, put on a show and, and uh, mm. you know, cr- uh, bang a few songs out, but she never does, no. <laughs> no I'm, I, I'm insisting constantly. I'm like, when's uh, when's the performance coming? But, uh, no, nah, she's just a lot of fun. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, yeah. Do you have conversations, I'm sorry, Heather, do you have conversations with your brother about what to expect out of marriage, like what constitutes being a good husband? Um, no, and I don't think they're, I don't even know if, I mean... Yeah, I asked my mum about that, about marriage and, and, and kids and and said, you know, uh, and she said, look, we've been doing it for a long, long time. If there was an answer to it and a way to do it properly, we'd have it figured out. There'd be one book that says, <laughs> here's, here's, how to, here's how to do it. And uh, no, we, but I don't, he doesn't need my advice. <laughs> I don't think he'd take it anyway. Yeah. He'd, uh, <laughs> Well, no, Chris mentioned banging out songs, and he said banging. My mind automatically went to Thor and that hammer. Aww. But no, I, but but I'm going somewhere because now he said marriage. So, like, if Thor was married, what does he do with that hammer? Just as advice, right. you know, if you want to spice up your sex life, what with, do you do with, with the hammer? What, what does he the do with the hammer? Big one, yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to use your imagination. Um, yes. I, I don't think that would come into the bedroom, would it? Really? That that sounds like a whole lot of right. trouble. After a certain amount of years of marriage, <laughs> Chris, you gotta. Yeah. Wow, the electric hammer. Um, I don't know. No. Talk to me, you know, Chris. Uh, what's always right does the radio interview stop? <laughs> right, right, right then, right? All right. I might never be able to you know, be, be allowed on that set again. Okay. <laughs> All right, we got some callers on the line. We're going to go to El Paso. Justin, what up? Justin, how you doing? Hey, Justin. Yo, yo, what's good, man? What's up, man? Go ahead. Say hello to Chris. Yo, what's good, Chris? Uh, you shot me on your horse in that movie, man. I did. <laughs> wow. I was one of the extras. You killed me. Oh man, I'm, I'm I'm happy to see you've recovered. <laughs> yeah, well done. It's pretty dope though. It was nothing personal. You, you, you got shot in the movie yeah, Twelve Strong. Yeah, yeah. It was a preview. Um, you're on the horseback. The horse jumps up and he just like blasts me on my stomach, and I fall over all dead. 
That we, you did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Made the trailer. Yeah, All right. buddy, well done. <laughs> All right, hey man, thanks for your call, Justin. Good to know he's listening. Uh, all the guys that killed got killed in the movie. Listens to Sway in the morning. All right, Morris <laughs> is in Florida. Go ahead, Morris. What? Hey, what? What's going on, everybody? I listen to y'all every morning. Thank, Thank you, you man. Hey, Morris. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> what's up, Chris? Hey, Chris, my question for you is, man, I've seen many of your movies, different various roles you play. What role was it for you that was the hardest role to play? Um, I'd, uh, probably this one, because we, um, you know, the, the production value of this film looks like it would have been $100 million, but w was a lot less. And so we had a uh, uh, very limited amount of days, uh, long days. We were on horseback for four months. Um, mm. It was, it felt, you know, like one big long boot camp, but incredibly rewarding and, and, and you know, a story that we we're all, you know, honored to, to be a part of. But um, it, it was pretty challenging, mate. All right. Hey, Morris, thanks for your call. Make sure you see the movie too this Friday, okay? In theaters um, hey. this Friday, all right? My man, you're a citizen. Yo, yo. In the morning. You're a citizen. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Damn. Sorry. Yeah, uh, Travante Rhodes is in this too, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, he's the black guy. Yeah. <laughs> right? He is incredible. You know, he runs like a ten six in the hundred meters or ten four or something. Damn! You no, know, he's yeah. incredible. He is an absolute athlete. We would all we stayed at the same hotel, all the actors, and we'd train together. And then we started not training when he was in the gym. Uh -huh. uh, he is just a beast. You, it, yeah, yeah that, ten five, ten six. <laughs> yeah, to give you perspective, crazy. was yeah. about where I was running when oh. I was. Oh, yeah. I, I used to run track, Chris. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, that. man. I'm sorry. You did? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I did. I ran in college. <laughs> Thank you. Chris. Well done. <laughs> I appreciate you. If you need me for a movie role, Thor, you need Thor to chase somebody. I can make it a long scene. Yeah. Uh, it was. Was there when I saw the rich, the picture of the original? Um, is it the beret or the, the original folks that went in? Mm -hmm. The original twelve. I didn't see a black guy in the picture. No, no, I don't think there was in that in, this, in that mission. So y'all added Travante to. I like that. He's just <laughs> mate, uh, we, we, he had um, moonlight coming out at that time. Yeah, mm. and uh, was about to explode on the scene, and 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 we were lucky to to get him. Um, I gotta say, I'd love to work with him again pretty soon. He's he's taken off. He's just yeah. done the new Predator film, and uh, I think he's in. The, if it was my prediction. He's the next big movie star. Mm -hmm. It's going to blow up. You're saying that. Tremonte yeah. Rhodes. 100%. Yeah. You heard it from Chris Hemsworth right here, ladies and gentlemen. I like that. My, makes... my wife agrees, too. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's, okay. She said, he is, uh, he's pretty pretty gorgeous. And I was like, hang on, honey. Hang yeah. on. <laughs> let's, just, let's just keep it down. <laughs> I like that. Before you go, man, we prepared a little game. First time guests always get a little game. Yeah. And this is called The Hammer of Hemsworth. Hey, Chris, you've got fans all across the globe. But today... We're going to put your honesty to the test. This is The Hammer of Hemsworth, right now on Sway in the Morning. All right. Give a round of applause for that production, too, man. <laughs> All right, very cool. Got a million dollar budget, baby. All right. If the Avengers were playing in the Super Bowl... Oh, wait. You know what? I fucked it up. Here's the bell. You're going to okay. need that because you have to pick an answer. Okay. I'm going to give you choices. You have to pick one. If you don't pick one, by the time I get to the last choice, you're stuck with it, okay? Mm -mm. Gotta right. make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, you only got so much time. I know, I know, right. I know. Okay, great. But I didn't buy this shit for nothing, so. Okay, Ooh. there you go. Bang right. the bell with that. <laughs> All right, there you go. We got a Thor hammer. <laughs> All right, now we're going to begin. If the Avengers were playing in the Super Bowl, who would be the quarterback? First choice, Vision? No. Scarlet Witch? No. Black Panther? Good choice. No, all right, okay. okay. <laughs> you excited about the Black Panther movie? I am excited about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 It comes out pretty soon. You see anything yet? Have I haven't. Seen? I've seen as much as you've seen, just to try this. Okay. But I hear it's pretty damn good. Okay, cool. All right. Which one of your co-stars would you want to have your back in a fight? Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> okay, not bad. He's a, uh, he's a Zen warrior, a whole lot of martial arts. A lot of martial Training over, the, over many, many years. In Robert. real life? Really? Yeah, no, he does. Yeah, a lot of Wing Chun. Really? Yeah, Jiu-Jitsu. You train? You uh, Muay Thai. Muay Thai? Yeah? yeah. Oh, okay. Good with the legs. You yeah. do that to the <laughs> um, I, I train with the Shamrock, one of the Ken Shamrock yeah, back yeah, yeah. in San Jose. You don't even know the name the of the 90s. one that you train with? <laughs> <laughs> I just say Shamrock. I said Ken. That's a bar, isn't it? <laughs> All right, go, go ahead, man. Yeah, no, right. I remember Ken Shamrock. If you were going to put out a mixtape, who would you want writing your rhymes? Lil Yachty? 21 Savage, Cardi B. You're stuck with Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> oh! 
So who do you pick? <laughs> he kind of picked Cardi B. Cardi B? Yeah. Okay. But you, okay. Got, you got Iggy out there. You got all day. You follow hip hop in um, Australia? Uh, a little bit, but yeah. the, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be lying if I said I, I was too educated on. Okay, good. good. <laughs> <laughs> he just rang it. was like, fuck all right. it. Right. One more, one more? All right, all right. This last one. If the Avengers had a theme song, what would it be? Queen, we will rock you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what were the other options? Enrique Iglesias, hero. Oh. Good. Metallica, <laughs> seek and destroy. Or Nas, hero. No, I think we did it. We did the right like choice. Queen. Oh, right. You rocked that. Queen? Okay. All right. All right. Hey, Chris, man, thank you. Thank you. It's been an honor yeah, to have you good. on the show, yeah. brother. Honored to be here. Chris. No, Thanks man, you. Chris Hemsworth, man. Make sure you see the movie 12 Strong um, in theaters this, this, this Friday. I was a big fan of Snow White and the Huntsman as well. I love those kind of movies. Chris, keep making them. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming by, man. It's Sway in the Morning. Only on Shade 45. Kill <laughs>